ready, dude. I think everybody's ready. <clears throat> Basic JavaScript. <clears throat> we don't have value from a function which we don't. You can pass values into a function with arguments. You can use a return statement to send a value back out of the function. For example, function plus three is getting um, one parameter norm. Return norm plus one. So return an addition of three to the um, parameter passing. Variable answer equals um, plus three and pass percent five. Which is which turns up eight. So plus three takes an argument for norm and turns the value equal to norm plus three. That's five plus three. Okay. Create a function, create a function times five that accepts one argument, multiply it by five, and returns the new value. See the last line in the editor for an example of how you can test the times five variable. That's the one variable. Returning a value. Value multiplies, multiply, multiplying the value by five, so nine and five. So, to um, test, to test function we just created. So, and so logic. Council log. Yeah. Oh. Good time. Thank you. So you can see the output. So the uh, function multiplies you know, the parameter passed in by five and returns the value. So you can console log it to um, test it. Cool. Okay, next one. Basic JavaScript. Understand un, undefined understanding undefined value returned from a function. A function can include the return statement, but it does not have to. In the case in the case that the function doesn't have a return statement, when you call it, the function um, processes the inner code, but the return value is undefined. Example, variable sum equals zero. Function add sum, we take in norm as a parameter. Sum equals sum plus norm. Okay. Variable return value equals add sum, taking in three. So this one, this one should, okay. Add sum will be modi modified, but return value is undefined. Add sum is a function without a return statement. The function will change the global sum, sum variable, but the return value of the function is undefined. Create the function add five without, without an argument. Without any argument, this function adds five to the sum, the sum variable, but its return value is undefined. Create the function add Without any argument. There you go.
where if you turn if you turn value is on the right. Let us sign the contract. Oh, you understand this, right? Oh. Yeah, you should actually be able to run the test now, I think, in pass. Yeah. Because they just want you to make a function that doesn't actually return anything, which is what you did there. Basic JavaScript. Assignments with a return value. If you recall, if you recall from the description of storing values with the assignment of paper, Everything to the right of the equal sign is before, before the value assigned. This means that we can take the return value of the function and assign it to a variable. Assume we have to define we have to define the function sum, which adds to it adds two numbers together, then our sum equals sum taking in five and two as a parameter as an argument. We call sum function. It returns the value of 17 and assigns it to our sum variable. Call the process uh, 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 our function with an argument of 7 and assign it, assign it to return value to a variable process. Okay, the already defined. So, so you You don't have to declare processed because it's already uh, initialized earlier in the code. If you look up a little, right under where it says setup, so you don't need the var keyword. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> The basic JavaScript stand in line. In computer science, a queue is an abstract data structure where, it, where items are kept in order. New items can be added at the back of the queue, and old items are taken off from the front of the queue. Write a function next in line, which takes an array path and an item and, and, in, and a number item as argument. Add the number to the end of the array, then remove the first element of the array. The next inline function is then return the element that will remove. So first, function. Add the number. Okay. 
Hey, can I uh, can I take over from here? Yeah, no problem. Thanks, man. I'm kind of stuck on the one before that. <laughs> This one right here, like, I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong on here. Okay. Got this, and then uh, it's just called the process arg function with an argument yeah. seven. The argument, you have to pass in an argument seven. That would be in place, that would, that would be in place for norm. So you just have to pass, pass in here. What do you call the, you know you're assigning the, the function to the variable. Hello? Yeah. So oh, I have to make a variable? Yeah, you're assigning the function to the variable. You've done that. So you need to pass in the seven, the seven argument, as in the argument seven, into the function. Hmm. Just um, compare with the um, example above you and, and try to... Yeah. And then also, what will probably trip you up is the processed variable. If you look up, it's already initialized, so you don't yeah. need the var keyword. I didn't make that okay. That'll probably, I don't know if it messes with the test, but I think it would. But there's still one thing left for you to do. No, just remove. One, there's one other thing left for you to do. And then just pass compare, the compare argument it. seven into the function. Uh, so the from, compared with the example of all right, I got this, that, this, that. You can see the function, the, the example of the function name is change, change, and the new variable is changed, as in the variable is changed. Hey, John, do you understand what an argument is? Um, not really, no. Okay, so when they created the function, process arg you see how it says num after that what num is is a placeholder or something sort of like a variable for Fine. arguments or parameters and it'll be used in the function it's like uh, it's a, uh, a local variable for that function right look at variable scope for me. okay um Let's see. So what I'm gonna have to do is pass in the, uh, the, the, the argument seven into the, um, the variable you called. So I'm not sure. Do I have to like, create a new variable or between the parentheses? Like so, John. Um, um, yeah. Let me let me share my screen so I can help you okay. understand this. Thank you. Okay, can you see my screen, John? Um, yep. All right. So what they want you to do is call the process arg function, which is already written out here, with an argument of seven and assign its return value. So it's going to return a value because it, you got this return here. Um, assign its return value to the variable processed. So they already had the variable processed up here. So the sentence, the way they're asking you is backwards from the way you're gonna write the code. So you're gonna do the process part first. Okay. Because that's the variable you're assigning to. And then you have the equal sign. Okay. Mm -hmm. They want you to call the process arg function. And you had that right. So that's how you call a function, right? Uh, yep. So what an argument is, whenever you type out a function and you have something in these parentheses, that's an argument. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So you can have multiple arguments, like num1, num2. You could have multiple arguments in there. They want you to put in the argument of seven to your oh. process arg function. Okay. I thought I so, did that, bro. Yeah. I thought I did that. So what it'll do is it'll run this function with seven here where the num is. And you'll get two, because seven plus three is ten divided by five. 
Oh. And now processed becomes two. Oh, all right. Uh, you want to do the next uh, few? Uh, I, yeah. Are you, I mean, are you understanding the concept? Yeah. Let me let me go ahead and uh, do uh, the next few. Okay. Hey, I just wanted to mention that uh, when I was first learning JavaScript, uh, something that uh, messed with me with arguments is the actual name of the argument isn't important. Like uh, in the example before where it says num, it doesn't matter like what the name of the actual argument is there as long as it's the same uh, inside the parentheses and that same uh, name is used inside the code. So instead of using num, you could have used x, y, z, uh, elephant, or like a anything you wanted like, to use as like long as you the, also like use it inside the function. Like naming is very rude. You use any uh, many name which you like. Right, so you said so you said it doesn't matter what the function is. Like the actual name of the argument doesn't oh, matter argument. as long okay. as you call it the same thing inside the function as you did inside the parentheses. Okay. Because like when I was learning some like uh, functions and stuff like that, I would get confused when they would use certain names, and I thought that you had to use a certain name inside the argument or something like that. But mm -hmm. that's not actually the the case. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna do this one. Um, I think he just did this one. Sorry, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this one too. Uh, basic JavaScript standalone in computer science: a GUI is an abstract data structure where items are kept in order. Um, new items can be added, uh, at the back of the GUI, and old items are taken off from the front of the GUI. Uh, write a function next in line, which takes an array R and a number uh, item as arguments. <clears throat> Add the number to the end of the array, then move, uh, remove uh, the first elements of the array. Uh, the next line, uh, the next inline function should then return uh, the elements that was removed. So it says write a next in line, write a function next in line, which takes an array. All right. Oh, dude, I can't believe how lost I am right now. So, uh, I think the first thing you want to do is look at what they're asking. So, it wants you, the first thing that they want is to add the number to the end of the array. So, uh, how would you add? the item argument to the end of the array argument. It's good. You're going to be using a method that uh, you look, you did yesterday. Like the array methods. So is, I would do this. Item plus R. Or no, no, no. It would be a, uh, it's not, is it, it's not post. It's, uh, oh man, I forgot what the name of it is. Shift. You're close enough. Push. No. Push adds an item to the end of the array. So, wait, no, you said that, right? Shift. No, push. Sorry. Push. And you don't want, this isn't what you want the actual function to return. Because if you look after it says, uh, the next in line function should then return the element that was removed. So in the return statement, what you want there is the item that the first item that's removed in the array. That's, that's shift. That you the shift function to remove the first item in the array. Okay, so we have function next in line. Our item. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do shift. No, your code should go here. It says return item. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, shift. I'm, I'm, uh, oh no, you're fine. It, here, uh, switch to line three. 
And then here, uh, let's start off with what the first thing they want to do, which is add uh, the item argument to the end of the array. So to use that, you're going to use push. So it's going to look use the like. Of that array to call I'm going to type in. Just, I'm just going to type in push. The first argument is array. The array. Well, push is a is a method, right, for an array. So f the first thing, yeah, there you go. You got it. And then what what do you, you want? What do you want to actually push into the array? Okay, order. Since the item are, argument. The item, you see. Yeah. So is it going to be plus item, or, or is it going to be a? It's going to be it. Uh, after push, you should have a pair of parentheses because it's a method. I gotta go back and then to... inside the parentheses is where you put item. Okay. Because the way it works is whatever's inside the parentheses will be pushed to the end of the array that's located before the period. Okay. And then, uh, so that's the first part they want. They want you to add the number to the end of the array. And so now the next part that they want you to do is remove the first item of the array and have that item returned. So now you want to move to the return statement. And now here you want to use a different array method to take the first value off and return it. You, you know, okay. You're still using the array. You're still using the array. Item is not an array. You know that. Um, yeah, so uh, you're still using the array. So delete item. And then you want to use the array to call the function. Yeah. And now you want to use one of the array methods to take off the first item and return it. Okay. And if you remember from yesterday, that would be the shift method. Shift. So it looks just like push where you have, and then you don't actually need to put anything inside the parentheses because it automatically takes off the first element. And we're taking so now if you look at console log, you can see uh, what actually happened in the function. The original array is one, two, three, four, five. Wait, you're ready? You're ready? Oh, the console log is already out. Yeah, the like, console log is already there. Just like just look at just look at just look at the console. And yeah, look tool. down at the console. It'll show you. Compare it with the test, uh, like with the test array variable. Okay. So if you look at the console log, the uh, the council the uh, the console down at the bottom, you could you can see what the function actually does. The first is the original test array, which is one, two, three, four, five. In the next console log statement, it's showing uh, the returned item from the function, which is the first item in the array that was removed, which is number one. And then in the third console log statement, it shows you the new array, which is uh, two, three, four, five, because five has been pushed or Sorry, two, three, four, five, six. Or yeah, two, three, four, five, six. Because six has been pushed onto the array and one has been shifted off. So you see what happened? Yeah. I'm def I'm 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 going I'm going back over this man. This is this is uh this is like a need to be uh uh I mean that also if anyone else thinks that they can explain it a little better. Don't be afraid to like hop in and yeah, uh, it's, cut me off. <laughs> it's a lot to understand, John, especially since this is like your first foray into my very first foray logical yeah. programming. Like you understood the HTML and CSS. That kind of makes sense, right? Because yeah. you know the yeah. structure, you know how to style it. Um, this is like your first foray into mm -hmm. programming with logic. So mm -hmm. it's okay to be a little bit confused at first. I know I was. Yeah, yeah I, I think just as you keep working through the stuff, you're it it'll click and then you'll uh it'll be easy. What I'm gonna end up having to do is I'm gonna end up having to go through all this again and I'm gonna have to end up taking all these and just 
I'm going to have to make a list with the definitions next to them, kind of like what we did with Git. I'm going to have to do that with this. Mm. I, think you, I think when you see, when, we, when you get to arrays in uh, MDN, you might be like, oh, okay, that's what it was doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I totally agree, man. I totally agree. Hey, it's actually, it's actually all right to confuse that. It's all right to confuse that. Yeah, I just got to do a little bit more studying and, and uh, a lot more studying. Uh, tonight, that's what I'm actually going to be doing. Last night, we were, uh, we were around tonight. I know what I got to do. <laughs> no doubt about it. I know what I got to do. Yeah, that's, that, that was a good uh, experience right there. Um, so let me try to continue. Uh, Basic JavaScript, understanding Boolean values. Um, uh, another data type is the Boolean. Uh, so Booleans may only be one of two values, true or false. Okay. They are basically little on and off switches where true is on and uh, false is off. <clears throat> These two statements are mutually exclusive. Uh, note. Boolean values are never written with quotes. Uh, the, the strings true and false are not Boolean uh, and have no special meaning in JavaScript. Modify the welcome to Boolean's function so that it returns true instead of false when the run button is clicked. Can't programming be that easy? <laughs> uh, use conditional logic with uh, if statements. Oh, so these are, uh, okay. If statements are used to make decisions in code, the keyword if tells JavaScript to execute code in the curly brace braces under certain conditions. Find in parentheses. These conditions are known as Boolean conditions and they may only be true or false. When the condition evaluates true, the program executes the statement inside the curly braces. When the Boolean condition evaluates to false, the statement inside the curly braces will not execute. So pseudocode, if condition is true, statement is executed. Uh, function test my condition if so my condition is an argument right yep yeah yeah yes 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 all right so if my condition return uh, it was true return it was false um test true test false uh when test is called with a value of true. The if statement evaluates my condition to see if the true, the, oh, to see if it is true or not. Since the function returns, it was true. When we call test with a value of false, my condition is not true and the statement in the curly braces is not executed and the function returns, it was false. So create an if statement uh, inside the function to return if yes, that was if uh, the pair uh, parameter was that's true is true and return no, that was false otherwise. See, this, this feels like programming. Right? I, I feel like I can understand this. Just small English. Is, is that, that's probably exactly what it is. This feels like more English. An if statement. I don't know why free code camp calls them arguments and some challenges and parameters and the others. This
Oh, okay. All right, so we have So if statement looks like a function, so we have to cover it. There's not true. So just read, read um, the, uh, the create an if statement inside the function to return. Yes, that was true. An if statement parameter, if the, if the parameter is true, then I return no. You can see the um, the, the parameter. The parameter will be used to determine if that is if statement will be executed. You understand? If if the parameter if the, if the parameter when we call the if, if, when we call the function, I will pass in um, a, a true um, argument for the parameter. They are using the value of the of the parameter determine if we have that statement. Okay. So the value of the, uh, uh, so is so this if, if we pass in a true value into the function, what we call it, this particular uh, um, 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 if it will be executed. So what should that particular statement return? Um. So inside the curly braces is what's going to be, is the code that's going to be executed if it's true. So if it's true, what do you want it to return? Was that true? Yes. So you just put a string there that says, yes, that was true. The string. Yeah, because look down at uh, the directions. It wants you to return... Uh, the string yes, that was true, if it's true. And the string no, that was false, if it was false. So you see what you're doing then? And remember, you need a return statement or the function will just return undefined. Yep, and then outside of the curly brackets uh, will be executed if it's false. If it's false. Outside of the, uh, of the curly brackets for the if statement. Delete one of those curly brackets, you got an extra one. Good. And this return statement will only be used if was that true is false. It's kind of weird saying it out loud. It's kind of it sounds weird. <laughs> you, have to end, you have to end the statements, like the return statement. So your code will run. Like with the... Um, Semicolon. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. So is this argument right here? Yes. Yep. Just leave, just leave it. That's right, because that's what you're testing. Okay. You this forgot the comma after yes. yes. That's all. Comparison with the equality operator. There are many comparison operators. Um, uh, Crystal, are you getting all this? I know you know more about JavaScript than me, but are you getting all this? No, I don't know more than more JavaScript. I'm, but I think I'm okay. You think you're, are you, are you understanding what we're doing here? Yeah, kind of. All right. I think the more that we go, I think it's more just, I have to muscle memory, like remember and repetitively do it repetitively. So, right. but it's making, it's making somewhat some sense. Okay. I think with the more examples we do, you'll understand how the code works because yeah. you'll be seeing how it's used in different scenarios and I think you're it'll right. make, make a lot more sense with more examples. 
yeah, I think that's pretty much what I have to do. It's just kind of just do it and not not stop pretty much. <laughs> Uh, basic JavaScript comparison with the quality operator. There are many comparison operators, and I'm seeing how it's all built on top of each other. That's the wild thing. I'm, I'm I, it, like, you can't skip any of this. You have to like go through it. That's why I know I'm not tonight. Go through this again and just go through it and relook at all the stuff. And but anyways, there are many comparison operators in JavaScript. All of these operators return a boolean true or false value. Uh, the most basic operator is the quality operator. Uh, which is two equal signs. The equality operator compares two values and returns true if they're equivalent to false. If uh, they are not, or okay, and false if they are not. Note that equality is different from assignment, which assigns the value at the right of the operator to the variable uh, in the left. <clears throat> Function equality test my val. If my val uh, equality is ten, return equal. Return not equal. Okay. Uh, if my val is equal to ten, the equality operator returns true. So the code in the curly braces will execute and the function will return equal. Otherwise the function will not, or, or excuse me, otherwise the function will return not equal. Um, in order for JavaScript to compare two different data types, for example, numbers and strings, it must convert one to another. This is known as type coercion. Once it does, however, it can compare terms as follows. One equality one true one equal. Am I saying that right? One equality. Yeah, one equal. Just it's all right. Okay. Uh, one equality two false. One equality one and a string. Uh, true. String of three equality to three is true. Add the equality. Operate uh, to the indicated line so that the function will return equal when val is equivalent to 12. Okay. So the indicated line is, let's change this line. Equal when val is equivalent to 2. Now, so you're equating vow, uh, vow to 12. Uh, yeah. to 12. Uh, return equal. Okay. I think that's it. So what, wait, I just want to ask a quick question. If you console logged the test strict 10, what would it return? Test strict. I think it would return 12. Am I right? Console oh, log it and you'll see. <laughs> Instead of asking all the time. <laughs> Where it says test equal, just put a console log around it. Test equal. Okay. You don't need the semicolon inside the parentheses. Not equal. Because you see what happens, it puts 10 inside the equation, and then it compares 10 and 12, and then it sees that they're not equal. So the code inside the curly brackets doesn't execute. The code outside of it does, because 10 equal to 12 is false. I just want to make sure everyone saw like what the function actually did. 
Where do you see 10 and 12? Where do you see 10? Inside the console log, you oh, see where yeah. it has 10? Yeah. That's yeah. replacing val when you call the function. I see. And so, oh, so this is calling it. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Yeah. Cool, dude. I like, I like getting stuff. It's always nice getting stuff, eh? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's nice when it clicks, and then you're like, "Oh, yeah. I finally see what's <laughs> what they're doing." <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Sorry about the interruptions. No, dude, appreciate it, man. Thank you. I needed that, dude. No, it's always good to know when you don't know. Um, comparison with the strict equality operator. Uh, strict equality. Uh, the three equal signs is the um, counterparts of the equality operator. However. Unlike the equality operator, which attempts to convert both values being compared to a common type, the strict equality operator does not perform a type conversion. Um, if the values being compared have different types, they are considered equal, and the strict equality operator will return false. <clears throat> so, for example, we have three with the strict equality of three is true, and three with the strict equality of... Uh, Three strict equality, uh, string three is false. If the second example, three is a number uh, type and three is a string type, um, the strict equality operator in the if statement is the function, excuse me, in the if statements. So the function will return equal when value is strictly equal to Seven. All right, so you strict the column of these things and the function of the return of the column of the string. Seven. All right. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's going to return false. It's going to return not equal. I'm going to show you it's not going to return equal. I'm going to show you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dude, that helped a lot, man. That interruption. Oh, so much. Practice comparing different values. In the last two challenges, we learned about the equality operator and the strict equality operator. So let's do a quick review and practice using uh, these operators some more. Um, if the values being compared are not of the same type, the equality operator will perform a type version and the then evaluate the values however the strict equality operator will compare both the data type and value as is uh, without converting one type to another we uh, equality string of three turns true because JavaScript performs type conversion from string to number. Okay, three strict equality string of three returns false because types are different and type conversions are not performed. In JavaScript, uh, determine the type of variable or a value uh, with the type of operator as follows type of three and so in type of variable type of variable or value with the type of operator as follows type of three returns a number type of three with a string of three returns string oh really oh that's neat all right i wonder why we even need that though that's that's, that's weird I guess for long stuff, eh? Anyways, the compare equality uh, function, <clears throat> excuse me, function in the editor pairs two values using the equality operator. Modify the function so that it returns equal only when the values are equal. Let's do it. And uh, change this line function. 
We're going to use the type of. Wait, what just happened there? All we did was we uh, we turned this into a uh, strict equality operator. Originally, it was two. Oh, okay, okay. I see so now. Things are the equality, but uh, we changed it to strict. So let's see if. A strictly equals or turn equal. All right. JavaScript comparison with the inequality operator. The inequality operator. Um, is the opposite of the equality operator. It means not and returns false, where equality is true, and vice versa. Like the equality operator, the inequality operator will convert data types of values while comparing. Okay, so one is not equal to two, it's true. One is not equal to one, a string of one, it's false. Okay. One is not equal to a string of one. It's false. One is equal is not equal to true. It is false. And zero is not equal to false. It's false. Huh. Oh, so one is true. Zero is false. Yeah. Add the inequality operator um, in the if statement so that the function will return not equal when val is not equal to 99. Why are they getting easier? It's like they put all the stuff at the end and it's like, yo, you gotta learn like, you, you gotta, so it says add the inequality operator uh, in the if statement so that the function will return not equal when val is not equal. I guess it's like this structure that's hard, not hard to pick up, but you just got to stay really, really focused. So 99. We're entering like one thing. And that's the easy part. Sleep listening to that. Uh, I'll sleep listening to that, uh, that JavaScript book. It's a nice read. Let's see. Not equal. Test not equal. Val. So I'm wondering, why does val not equal 99? Is it because they're different words? Like they're different, you know, 99 is a number and val is like a... Like a word. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. The statement is if val is not equal to 99, then return not equal to get. If val oh. equals to if val is not equal to 99, then return not equal. If it is equal to, it comes down and returns equal. Okay. So I just made it equal. I get it. Yeah. Yeah, think of val as just a placeholder yeah. for when you actually call the function with an argument. Whatever yeah. that is, the actual argument will replace whatever val is. 
val is just kind of the placeholder until you actually call the function with an argument so how come if i so let me change this too It won't run because your arguments can't start with a number. Really? Yeah, they're just like variables. You can't start them with a number. Yeah, like there are rules in naming your arguments and variables. Does Free Code Camp go over that? Did they, did they tell you that? Yeah, when they mentioned when they talked about variables. Yeah, I gotta go over it again. Um, so how many more do we have in the basics? How many more questions do you guys know? Anything. I want to go back over to MDN, but like if we haven't done enough, I don't want to go over there yet. No, you could go over to MDM because MDM is still going to show you the basics, which I think you still need help on, John, okay. because those functions are really throwing you for a loop. There pun intended in that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It wasn't intended, but I'll take the pun. Um, let's see. How about we uh, get to... Let's get to, like, access object properties. Yeah, let's get right there. Oh, you mean we should leave the rest? But we still try to get rid of the OJ. What was that? You guys want to do these and then go over to MDN or do you guys just want to go over to MDN? I think well, we should go over to MDM uh, to see if it helps it stick for you. Okay. Let's get it. Um, I'll stop this recording. <laughs>